there's this really cool property in math, and it lets you say that if the Pythagorean theorem is true, then you have a right triangle. But it also lets you go backwards and say if you have a right triangle, then the Pythagorean theorem is true. And that's actually a really powerful thing in math and even just in, in writing in general to be able to just switch up the order of a sentence and have it maintain its truth value. So what we're going to look at today is whether or not we can use the Pythagorean theorem to prove whether or not something is a right triangle. Because as you know from younger grades, you can't just look at a triangle and say, oh, that's a right triangle. Um, because remember back in the day, your teachers would say to you, well, the only way you know if it's a right triangle is if it has the right triangle box or the right angle box. You can't assume because it could be 89 degrees or it could be 91 degrees or it could be 90.2 degrees. You never know what the measure of the angle is. And so you can't just assume by looking at something. And that's why a lot of times in pictures, it'll say that it's not drawn to scale. Sometimes you hear that phrasing, not drawn to scale, because they don't want you to, to assume that the, the shape looks, um, the shape is the way that it looks. So the way that we can prove whether or not it's a right triangle is by using the Pythagorean theorem. So remember the Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and the hypotenuse has to be the c value, but it doesn't matter which one's a and which one's b. So let's plug it in, 9 squared plus 40 squared equals 41 squared. Get your calculators out. 9 squared is 81. 40 squared is 1,600. And 41 squared is 1,681. So hopefully you don't need your calculator necessarily to see that. You get 1,681 on the left and that is equivalent to 1,681. So this is a right triangle. So we say yes, right triangle. And I'm gonna get flashy with my symbol and just put the a picture of a triangle to represent the word triangle. Because one of the things that's cool about math is that we use symbols to represent words. Probably not um, really approved when you go to English class, but in math class, it's, it's totally cool. Now again, let's check here with the Pythagorean theorem in example B. Remember, it's a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And we talked about how the hypotenuse does not have to be the slanted on the right side. It can be anywhere. And one of the tricks that I told you is that the hypotenuse is the longest side. I also told you the hypotenuse is across from the 90 degree angle. So since we don't have a 90 degree angle, we can't use that technique and we can't use the it doesn't look like 90 degrees because it could not be drawn to scale. It might actually be a right triangle or it might be, you might just be looking at it at a, a different angle and this maybe could be a right angle. So you never know. So let's start plugging in some values. Um, this has to be the C um, and it doesn't matter what A and B are. So 18 squared plus 12 squared equals 24 squared. 18 squared is 324. 12 squared is 144. And 24 squared is 576. So is this equal to 576? It is not because you get 468. So this is no not right triangle. So you can also use the Pythagorean theorem when you're on the coordinate grid, when you're plotting points, but you often use this thing called the distance formula. And the distance formula is this formula right here. I know it looks relatively scary, but it's actually not. You should recognize a lot of these parts to it um, from the slope formula. Remember, we used x2 minus x1 for the slope formula, and we used y2 minus y1 in the slope formula. And so we're just taking that rise and the run value, and we're turning it into a Pythagorean theorem style formula. So while it looks very complicated, it's actually just the Pythagorean theorem um, on the coordinate grid. So I'm going to show you how to find the distance between two points that are on the coordinate grid by using a distance formula. And then I'll show you how you could also create it by drawing a picture and plotting the points. It's a little more work and I would not encourage you to do that because I would like you to practice with the distance formula. But I'll show you how you can also get the value of that distance 
by plotting the points. So first we're going to do part A and we're going to use the formula. So remember, um, you just have to label your points. This will be x1, this will be y1, this will be x2, and this will be y2. So now you're just plugging in values. So I've got x2, so that's negative 4 minus 1 squared plus negative 2 minus 5 squared. And now I just have to follow my order of operations and parentheses will come first. So that's negative 5 squared plus negative 7 squared. That turns to 25 plus 49 and I just have to add them. So I have the square root of 25 plus 49 which is 74 and that actually doesn't reduce. So there are two things. One is you actually, sorry, I just had a little dot in the way, square root of 74. You can actually leave it as the square root of 74. That is actually a mathematically acceptable answer. Um, you could, however, also turn that into a decimal and find the square root of 74, which is approximately equal to 8.6 units, I guess, since we're on the coordinate grid. Um, so either one of these is okay and actually we'll round, let's get rid of those squiggles and let's just say 8.6. Now let me actually show you how you would do this on the coordinate grid. So you'd, you'd make an xy and you'd actually plot those points. So I've got 1, 5, which let's just say is around here. and negative 4, negative 2, let's say, which is right there. So if I want to find the distance between these two points, I would create a right triangle. Well, remember, the Pythagorean theorem is this side squared plus this side squared uh, equals the other side squared. So if you're on the coordinate grid, this distance right here would be from negative 4 all the way to 1. So that would be a distance of 5. This distance here would go from a negative 2 y value all the way up to a 5 y value, so that would give you 7. So you would do 5 squared plus 7 squared equals c squared, and cut to the chase, you'd get 74 equals c squared, and then you'd square root both sides, and you see you get the same answer. So both ways are fine. This is an algebraic way of calculating it, and this is more of a geometric way of calculating it. So I'd like you to practice with the algebraic way, um, but recognize that if you're stumped, you can also calculate it by doing the pictures. Or if you find that the pictures are better, you can do that. But I also want you to be able to use the distance formula. I don't want you to say, well, I'm not going to learn the distance formula technique because I'm always going to draw a picture. You have to know how to do the distance formula, even though you're choosing not to do it. All right, if you're up for the challenge, pause the video and do number two on your own. If you don't want to do uh, it on your own, let's do it together. First thing you have to do is label, so I'll call this x1, y1, x2, y2, and now I plug it in the formula. So I've got 9 minus 7 squared plus 6 plus 3, right, because it would be minus negative, so I'm shortcutting to make it just say plus squared. 9 minus 7 is 2 squared, and 6 plus 3 is 9 squared. I'm not using parentheses because they're positive values. Remember, negatives have to go in parentheses, but positives don't have to. Although, you, I, I guess you could if you wanted to. So it's going to be 4 plus 81. So that's going to be the square root of 85. And again, if you want to leave it like this, that's mathematically totally cool. But if you want to get your calculator, you certainly can find the square root of 85, which is 9.2. So we could also say it's about 9.2 units because we're on the coordinate grid. Let's do it by drawing a picture. So 
So I'm going to plot 7, negative 3, which would be like right around here. And this would be 9, 6, which would be up here. And I would find the distance between the two points by turning it into a right triangle. So this distance on the bottom would go from a value of 7 to a value of 9, so that would be 2. This distance on the side would go from a negative 3y value all the way up to a 6, so that would be 9. And hopefully you're also recognizing that the 2 and the 9 are right here in the formula. So earlier, the 5 and the 7 were here in the formula, only they were negative, but when you square it, it's the same thing. So these values are not magical values, they're actually values that you would get somewhere else. Um, so then what you would do is you would do 2 squared plus 9 squared equals c squared, right? This is using the Pythagorean theorem style. And let's shortcut and let's just say you get 85. And when you square both sides, you see you get the same thing. So either technique is fine. I'd like you to pause the video and read example 3. So now what they're asking us is this angle right here, a 90 degree angle. This is the angle they're asking about. So they're wondering, is this a right triangle? So what you have to do mathematically is find the distance from these two, then find the distance from these two, then find the distance from this, and see if it is a 90 degree angle when you do the Pythagorean theorem or the distance formula. So I'm gonna map out the plan for you if you're not sure. If you are sure of how to do it, feel free to pause the video right now and try it on your own. If you need a little guidance, here's what you would do. First thing you have to do is you have to find the distance. So you're going to find distance 1 using the formula. Then you're going to find distance 2 using the formula. Then you're going to find distance 3 using the formula. And then we want to see if they then would create a Pythagorean theorem right triangle by doing d1 squared plus d2 squared and see that if that equals d3 squared. So again, here's what I want you to do. I want you to pause the video and find distance 1, which is this length, right? These are the coordinate points. Then you're going to find distance 2, which are going to be these coordinate points, and then find distance 3 and use these coordinate points. When you have these three distances, play the video and I'll give you the next steps. Okay, hopefully you're, you're here and what I've done is I left it as a radical um, as I talked about earlier in this lesson, but then I also gave you the decimals for those of you that are decimal lovers. Now what I want to do is check my values here in the Pythagorean theorem to see if they're right triangles. So I'm going to show you the magical part of leaving it as a square root in a moment. So I've got the square root of 1800 squared, right? That's the first side, plus the square root of 5000 squared. That's the second side. And that equals the square root of 6,800 squared. Now, one of the things that we talked about was how squares and square roots are inverses. So when you do this math, you actually just get 1,800. And when you do this math, you actually just get 5,000. And so they actually eliminate each other, which is why I preferred to use them over the decimals, because then I can just deal with the numbers. And so you do actually get 6,800 so your friend did actually make a right turn. Yes, the friend made a right angle. If you have any questions, write them down and ask me when you come to class.